Jim Wilson, founder of Pray North State, focuses on the barriers between the cultures and the denominations. And you know, Val, he really issues a call yes. for us to come together as one, one in the body of Christ. Kaylin Steele sat down with Jim Wilson and talked about how we can overcome some of the barriers in our everyday life. What a treat to be here with Jim Wilson today on the bridge. And you're from Redding, California, and you traveled all the way up here to talk to us about your wonderful book, Living as Ambassadors of Relationships. And I understand that you and your wife, Diana, have started the ministry. And uh, why don't you just tell me a little bit about what that is? Well, Pray North State was actually launched in 2001. I had been a pastor for 16 years. Diana and I had visions that literally came both independently of each other and, and at the same time okay. of, of a ministry that would, would literally connect the dots uh, in terms of the body of Christ. We're, we're all about going into the communities in which we serve and, and, and trying to gather the body for prayer for transformation. Uh, Holy Spirit transformation, right. do pragmatic prophetic acts such as uh, targeted prayer projects uh, where we will literally call the body together for a period of say 90 days of praying about uh, the suicide rate in, in a region, uh, mm -hmm. cancer admissions to the hospitals, the crime rate. And we see the Lord, we document literally what the Lord does in terms of, in terms of dropping these issues wow. by, you know, by more than half. Youth deaths is something we always pray about and we always see a big decline in young people dying suddenly when, when people gather together to pray. We've also found, though, that um, there are any number of obstacles in the way of the body truly being a 1 Corinthians 12 community, a, 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 a body of unity. Right. Uh, and they cross the streams, they cross, uh, they cross ethnic lines, they cross regional lines. And we discovered early on, really, I would say from the very beginning, that if our ministry was going to be an effective transformation agent, it also had to be a reconciliation agent. Right. So here we are. Great. So is that the inspiration behind this book? I see reconciling individuals, families, and genders. Mm -hmm. I mean, and lots of other things. So tell us, why did you write the book? Uh, it became clear to me early on, within a couple of years of the beginning of the ministry, that a book like this needed to be written. I would say that the Lord was urging me on, and, wow. and literally, we were in Hawaii, and we were there. We were having a wonderful time, but we weren't there on vacation. We were there to minister, and I, I went into a back bedroom to take a nap one day, and the Lord said, you're not taking a nap. Get out a pencil and paper, <laughs> and he literally downloaded the structure. Now, not, 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 not uh, the content, right. but literally downloaded the structure, and it took me about three years to actually write it. But uh, so, so yes, it, it, was, it was a necessary consequence of the ministry. It was also something the Lord said, Jim, Fisher cut bait, get on with it. That sounds like something God would do. He, yeah. he, <laughs> I know he talks to me that way. He's, he's always loving, but not always gentle. Right. So you say in the book that there are several lines of division within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. What would you say um, those are? Well, there is, there is certainly the liturgical stream uh, represented by Catholics, Episcopalians, uh, Lutherans, that sort of thing. There's the evangelical stream. There's the charismatic stream. Uh, there are many, many streams within, within each of those yeah. streams, and and every one of us was gifted with a particular identity, particular gifts that are meant to be shared with the body. We get into trouble when we say my gift is better, right? My gift is more important. If only you'd be more like me. So those 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 issues need to be overcome, and and we tend to think of them as second nature. Um, is it okay to baptize a child? Is it only okay to baptize an adult? The Lord has no particular concern about that, and you can make a good case for, for both practices from Scripture, and, and, mm -hmm. and in fact I do in the book, just to, just to let people know, do what God is leading you to do, and don't look down on your brother, Right. but love your brother, bless your brother. So if someone's watching this today thinking, you know what, that has been my struggle, mm -hmm. you know, denomination or church hopping or whatever because I can't find my place, what's the first step to really getting to that reconciliation? The, the first step is to ask the Lord to give you a very clear picture of who you are mm. and be upfront about who you are, but also make a choice to respect the other guy who is not exactly, and, and this, by the way, would apply to reconciliation across the board, whether we're talking about political or regional or generational or gender, you name it. Ask the Lord to show you who you are and, and be okay with that, be on top of that, but, but also respect the passion that the other fellow displays for who God has called him to be. And again, this is within the bounds of Scripture. Yeah. Scripture is the Word of God. We've got to be within those bounds. Yeah. But within those bounds, let's be cool with each other. And the other thing is to ask God to reframe the conversation that you're having. So that if, you, so that if I'm willing to tell you exactly who I am, and you may be okay with that, and you may not. Mm -hmm. And you, you tell me exactly who you are, and I may be okay with it, and I may be not, but I choose to respect you, you choose to respect me. And then we say, Lord, how can we come together? How can you pull us together? Because unless the Lord builds the house, you know what happens. Right. That, a lot of times I feel like Christians almost feel like they can get away with 
um, disrespecting each other oh, sure. because it's in the church. Uh, well, do you find that a lot? Yeah, I do, and and I don't know that people. I don't know that I would see people saying because it's in the church so much as it's. But what I believe is so foundational that if you don't believe what I believe. Then I we can't possibly right. get along. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you just need to come around. It right. Is the way so many of us look at it, and 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 we we feel fully justified in that. Right. So you talked about this decision that you have to make, mm -hmm. um, and and have God show you who you are. So just to sum it up, what is reconciliation? All right. Reconciliation is the process whereby I speak who I am, I listen carefully to who you are, and I ask God to reframe the conversation. But it only comes about. When we walk out, and this, I think, if, if, if there was a way to summarize the book, yeah. it's, it's in this way. In John chapter 8, the first eight verses, there's a woman taken in adultery. We all know the story. Mm -hmm. she, is, she goes to Jesus for, for help, and Jesus says, Let he who's without sin amongst you cast the first stone. That's the only thing he says. But he also draws a line in the dust of the temple floor, and he waits for the people to cross it. And when they go home without having repented, without having stepped across that line, even though they don't stone the woman, They've not done what Jesus wants all of us to do, and that's step across the line and not care who else is standing there. The essence of reconciliation is a willingness on my part and on your part to step across that line that Jesus has drawn in the sand and not care who else is standing there as long as we get to be with Jesus. Right. Having taken that step, then I can begin to speak who I am. You can begin to speak who you are. We can ask God to reframe the conversation. Right, and like you were saying before, what would the world be like if all Christians if were willing we just to step over that, that line? Step over that line, it would yeah. be Transformation. Transformation. There would be no way to stop it. Right. There would be no way to stop it. That's right what the on. book's about. So how central is the gospel to reconciliation? I, I would say it, I would put it actually the other way around. Karen. Okay. Uh, the, it, is, it is that reconciliation is essential to the gospel. In, I, I mean, it's two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. But you have, you have 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 20, in which Jesus says, I've made you a new creation. How do you walk that out? By being my ambassador. That's where the reconciliation comes in. It's absolutely core to the wow. Great Commission. Great, so the book is called Living as Ambassadors of Relationships and you can pick it up um, by contacting yourself That's through the true. website praynorthstate.org and make sure you get that. We're going to a quick break right now and we'll be right back with Jim Wilson. Discover how to release past hurts in order to come to a place of forgiveness coming up next on The Bridge.